Sunday night, and good that you're with us. Uh, we're going to explore a little bit of the Orient tonight, and some lessons in Oriental spiritualism, if you would, call Tao, as spelled T-A-O, but pronounced Tao. And what it means, actually, is the way. The way. It's always the way, isn't it? I mean, it's, whether it be Buddhist or whether it be Taoism or whether it be Jesus, it's always the way, Tao. And as we begin our journey into this exploration of Eastern thought and Oriental belief called Tao, let's take a look, as we know we're, we're studying Tao, which is the way, and let's take a look at Jesus Christ and, and his um, statement in Matthew chapter 7, all right? Matthew chapter 7, it's on page 782 in those little Bibles. And see what he says about Tao, okay? Matthew chapter 7 and verse 14. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leads unto life, and few there be that find it. Few there be that find what? Tao, the way. And so that's what we have to concern ourselves with. You know, and what we were talking about a moment ago, the imbalance, thinking, oh, hey, I meditate, so everything is okay, but at the same time, we're not taking care of ourselves physically, and we find out that there is no balance. We're completely out of balance. We can't be in the center, and if we are alerted to that fact, then we start to do something about it to bring the body into the balance with the mind, then we, we can get into the center. There has to be a narrow way. I mean, you, so, you know, it, it's, it's very easy to, to think, well, I'll go to church and I'll, and I'll, and I'll meditate and, and I'll listen to Kitaro and Vangelis and everything will be okay and I'll read uh, uh, Joel Goldsmith. It's not going to do it. You have to be the center of balance. You have to make it work in your life. And you know what's really interesting about it is nobody can do it for you. Nobody in the world. No church, no religion, no, no, no religious person. Only you can find the balance and only you can center yourself. The Oriental way, Tao says, and, 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 and this, is, this is interesting as we listen to this. One does not say to one's eyes, go out and do something to that thing out there. One looks, looks long, and the world comes in. Hey, you know, see, that's not the way we are, especially in our Western culture, you know. I mean, Tommy's a, a police officer. When he sees something doesn't look right, pow! You know, he's going to go. And, and, and of course, in many, in many professions, that's the way it is. And in our lives, that's the way it is, because what's that, what that is saying is that we spend our lives plotting and planning how we're going to change this, including other people. That's what Jesus was talking about this morning. It was very, very important. When his disciple cut this fellow's ear off, Jesus put it back on. You can't. You can't cut somebody else's ear off. In other words, you can not make that person listen. That person has to cut their own ear off. They have to separate themselves from the outside. And so, as, as, as Tao says, one looks, looks long, and the world comes in. How does Jesus put it? It's on page 825. It's in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 30, uh, my goodness gracious, well, oh, excuse me, excuse me, Mark chapter 13, okay, page 825, Mark chapter 13 and verse 37, okay, and here Jesus Christ says, what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Now, what did they say? What did the Tao just say? One looks, looks long, and the world comes in. Jesus puts it this way. What I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. That's your meditation. Watch. Watch. There's an important Chinese term we're going to look at. It's interesting because the fellow who owns the Chinese restaurant uh, next door here, his name is Weiwei. He calls himself Ray, you know, but his name is Weiwei. An important Chinese term is we, 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 uh, however you want to pronounce this. I, <laughs> we, 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 okay. We, let's call, let's call it for the we, why. Well, we don't, yeah. We're not here to be, become proficient in the language. 
But what that means is not doing. OK? We what? Not doing. It doesn't mean not doing nothing. It means not forcing. And that's a big difference. Not forcing. In other words, things will open up of themselves to their nature. You cannot force. You cannot make this happen. Things will open up themselves to their nature. Let's look at the Bible and see how the Bible addresses it in page 584, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8, okay? Page 584, Isaiah chapter 8. And let's see what it says. Verse 17, it says, And I will wait upon the Lord that hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. I will wait, and I will look. I won't force, you see. I can't, I can't make this happen. I can't become religious by uh, accomplishing uh, certain rules or regulations that this church or organization says that I should accomplish. So all I can do is wait and watch. I can't do anything about it. I can't make it happen. I can't force my way in. So this is this we why, if you want to call it. I can't do anything. So I'll sit here and I'll wait and I'll watch. I'll direct my attention to higher principles, but I can't do anything. You see? By my going to your particular church or attending your particular ritual, I, it's not going to do anything. I've simply got to wait. I've got to wait and I've got to let it come to me. Go to page 605. You're not too far from there in the Bible. And, and go to um, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And verse 30. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 30. Okay. And uh, verse 31, excuse me. They that wait upon the Lord. This is a beautiful scripture that everybody knows. They say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. In other words, to soar into higher realms of higher consciousness. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But they that wait. See? You can't force you or you can't go get it anywhere. That's the, that's the wild part about this. All of this religious training and all of the efforts we make in our religion to be a good Catholic or to be a good Methodist or a good Baptist, what can you do? You can't do anything. It has to come to you. They that wait upon the Lord. There's an ancient saying that the Chinese have which I think sums up what we're talking about. And this is what it is. Listen to it very closely. The Tao, the way is close at hand, yet people seek it afar. I want to, re I want to write that because I want you to, to look at that and at the same time look at the scrip scripture. The Tao, and if you want to call it the uh, way, is close at hand, yet people seek it Far. Now, the reason I'm writing it out is because I want you to compare the scripture that we look at. This is the Tao. This is Chinese. This is ancient. The way, only it's easy for, the way is close at hand, yet people seek it afar. See, what they're saying is, they're saying that, you know, the Western religious people, Christian people are wrong. They're saying that they're, they're thinking of a God off somewhere and they're trying to find a, a salvation from some place that's going to come to them. But they're saying, no, it's close at hand. A and yet you're seeking some far off place to find it. Now look what it says in page 853 of your Bible. There's a little bottle in, in Luke chapter 17. And uh, since we have this up on the board, we'll look at that and at the same time look at Luke. Luke chapter 17. And we'll go to verse 21. Okay? So here's what it says. Jesus Christ says, Neither shall they say, Lo there or lo here. In other words, afar. For the kingdom of God is within you. In other words, he's saying, yes, the way is close at hand. And people will say, oh, it's over there. You got to go this way. You got to pray here. You got to pray that way. He says, that's not the case. It's close at hand. How much closer can it be than to be within you? And this, these are the things, like even going through this situation I'm encountering right now and situations that you encounter, you grow with so much because you use it as a lesson. You use it as wisdom to understand. I can understand you a lot better 
because I understand myself a lot better. And I understand circumstances a lot better than maybe I did. When you're flying and nothing's going wrong, you know, you don't give time to think about uh, the balance. You don't give time to think about maybe you say, oh, well, come and meditate and do this and do that and do the other thing. But it's like a fellow told me over the telephone, he says, well, see, when you get this situation comes upon you, what you're trying to do is get up and walk through it and say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm meditation so I can walk through it. But then you're reducing yourself to the level of the thing that's coming against you and you're fighting with it. And when you get down to that level, it's going to hit you. He says, taking no thought is actually thinking. You've got to think to take no thought and you run into a lot of problems doing that. You try, you have to try to take no thought. But he said, instead of trying to take no thought where you're trying to think your way through, you transcend it. And, and I practiced it, and it worked. I, I just said to the thing that was coming against me, I said, oh, go ahead and do your thing. I'm going upstairs. Let me know when you're done. And I sat in a chair. I put my head back, and I let this thing go. And it took about 40 seconds, and it just went, 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 went away. It was gone. So I wasn't fighting with it, and I wasn't trying to correct it, and I wasn't trying to, well, I'm going to take no thought so this thing doesn't bother me. It's impossible. When something is, like I said to Joan, and I've said to you before, just here's the thing. When you don't feel good and the doctor takes blood tests, try to take no thought about the results. I'm sure you could speak on that a lot better than I could. You know, you can't. So what do you do? You transcend then. Taking no thought is not coming up against the thing and saying, I'm shutting down the thought patterns. It's lifting yourself into higher realms and allowing this thing to happen and run its course and then making yourself one in this nirvanic experience, this higher experience. And it does work. So here then, there's no difference between what Jesus is saying and what this Tao is saying. No difference. <clears throat> in, in Chinese, and you know, you're, you're well aware of it, the, the, the ancient art of Chinese is, is very beautiful. And it's known as Lai and Se. L-I and T-S-E. Now, Lai, or Li, however you want to call it, is the original, what it is, it, this is the, it's the beautiful way of saying, this is the natural. And how, how natural do they make it? They say it is the veins in the jade. That's how natural it is. That's like the veins in the jade. Now, say, are the markings made by man? See, there's a big difference. The natural, the markings made by man, and that's the light say. And, and why that's important, because in the art of Tao, in the art of Chinese, the art is to know and make known the laws and the patterns of nature. Here. Okay. Not to, not to interfere with it. The markings of man should not interfere, should not change it, see. And, and to know these, then, the, the, the Chinese artist who would know Lai Tzu would know that he cannot force his own intentions on nature. I cannot change the veins in the jade. They have to be left alone. I may paint around it, but I can't, I can't touch that. See? So we see then how much trouble we can get into when we depend on a written interpretation instead of nature. You've got, look at you, oh, you've got books, you've got Bibles that somebody else wrote and, and, and changed and all of these things. And what you've done, you, you take that which is the center, that which is the nature, that which is the origin of it, it all gets changed and you begin to depend on that. You, by, by depending your whole life on written things, are depending on the markings made by man instead of the natural veins in the jade. It's, it's very important because this is where the center has to be in that which is natural. But we've made the center in that which is created by man. And so then we, we, the written word that you have, the Bibles that you have, are changed. And they're changed by people who know nothing of the nature of the veins and the jade. The people that changed that Bible over the years, they know nothing of the origin of things. They only know what somebody else has changed, so they changed it, and everybody changes it to suit, and it becomes a man-made thing. And we wind up worshiping say instead of worshiping or understanding Lee. Look what I'm talking about. Maybe I think the Bible can speak to this a little better than I did. Go to page 642, the book of Jeremiah, and go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 23. And it's on page 642. And let's go to verse 31. And now look what Spirit says. Here, we're talking about the things that are written in your Bible. 
the, the things that man writes, the things that you, you've taken as truth all of your life. So, well, this must be true. It's in the Bible. But now, how much can you depend on that that's written? When I show you the scripture I'm going to show you here. Look at this. Page 642, the book of Jeremiah. Look what the quote-unquote word of God says. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 31. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, that used their tongues and said, he said. Did you ever hear this? Thus saith the Lord. Huh? Is it in your book? Look at it. I'm against that. He said, I am against the prophets that use their tongues and say, he said. Now look at this. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Now look at the next line. Yet I sent them not nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all. But they call themselves prophets. So everybody says, I'm going to follow the prophet. I'm going to follow the evangelist. I'm going to follow the pastor. He calls himself a pastor. But look at this. I didn't send them. Now, I want, to, I want to show you something. Page 646, Jeremiah chapter 27, and verse 15. Watch this one now. We talk about Tao, and we talk about getting with nature. Verse 15, Jeremiah 27. For I have not sent them, says the Lord, yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I might drive you out, you might perish, and the prophets that prophesy unto you. I, I have not sent them, yet they prophesy in my name. There's, there's the Bible telling you. That's nature speaking. You've got people that come and say, I am a prophet of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. The Lord has given me this word for you. And here it says, who said so? Now, how can you tell then, since the Bible has told you that these people who are calling themselves prophets are not sent by God at all, how can you tell when somebody's saying the right thing? The, 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 you can't. You've got to get out of here and you've got to go here. The only place is right here. It's got to become truth. It's got to become natural to you. Not only the veins and the jade, it's got to be the veins in you. It's got to come natural within yourself. You've got to find that truth. You cannot depend on it from any human being. Because as you see in the Bible, it's something written three, 4,000 years ago. Here is the, uh, the, the, the prophet of God or whomever saying, hey, these guys that are saying they're prophets and they're right and all this, I didn't send them. But they're, they're, they're using my, you know, don't you hear them all the time on television? In Jesus' name. We command this in Jesus' name. He says, they're using my name, and I didn't send them. Now, you saw that. You saw it in, you saw it in your own Bible. So how do you know? And, and the way, then, is this Tao, the nature within. There's a basic tenet of Tao. Doing, though not forcing. In other words, the kingdom of heaven comes of its own. It's nothing you can force. You can't, you can't force can't make it. You can't do anything. So people say, how do I meditate? You don't. Meditation comes. Meditation happens. You don't. You can't do anything about it. You make yourself available for it. Sit down and let it happen. And it'll come. And that's the important thing. Knowing the Oriental Tao that we're studying a little bit of tonight, of doing though not forcing, helps you to understand. What's this whole thing about? The whole thing about Tao is doing but not forcing. I will meditate. I will make myself available. I will lift myself to the, to, to, the, to the bliss of the higher realms of consciousness and I will just sit, but I will not force. I will wait till it comes. I will not try to buy in the New Age magazine so I can get my, some, some earphones to take me on a psychedelic trip into nirvana. Baloney. That's forcing. It won't work. I am not going to you know, do this or do that with somebody else says, uh, Tommy says this, and Albert says this, and Joan says this, and John says this. I, I can't, I've got to go to, I've got to, everything man says, I've got to wipe out of my mind. And I've got to bring myself to the point of what the spirits say and allow it to happen. I cannot in any way, shape, or form do anything to make a meditation occur. Meditation will happen of itself when I'm doing nothing. So look at that. I think you'll be able to understand the scripture in the Bible a little better by having known about Tao and not forcing yourself or trying to force yourself into any actions to create a, a heavenly experience. Look at page 786, Matthew chapter 11. Page 786, Matthew chapter 11, and verse 12. 
and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. See? And that's, that's what he's talking about. He doesn't mean, I mean, you know, it doesn't mean that there are people banging down the gates of some town somewhere on some planet and climbing over the bushes and charging through the streets. It's, he's saying that what this, what this means is that people, violent people, violent people are people who are going to push themselves on you. What did we say this morning? They came after Jesus when he was in the garden and who, they had clubs. And who had clubs? The chief priests and the elders. There was no cops. There was no, there was no, there was no, uh, lawyers, or there was no uh, troopers, state troopers, or, or soldiers. There was religious people. They came with clubs. And they still do, and here's their club. And they'll club you, they'll beat you over the head with this thing. They, got, they use it as clubs, and, 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 and the guys on television use it as a gun. They hold it up. Give me your wallet. I want your MasterCard. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. In his precious name, hallelujah. Yeah. That's what they do. So that basically, we begin to understand then that even though you may not think you're making any progress, it's not dependent on what you think. It's irrelevant what you think. Progress makes itself. If you're, if you're willing to open yourself to it. Um, I was reading what Joseph Campbell was talking about, the, the talking about the center. Did you ever see these big sumo wrestlers? They wear these little things here, and they're big, big fat guys, you know? And they come down, and one guy stands there, and they're still. Did you ever stand there? And they'll stand. Everybody goes, everybody goes nuts. And these guys don't do it. They stand there. And they'll go, and they'll take them with a the salt, throw them around, and they'll come back. And then, but oh, everybody's sitting there because they know what's going on. Each one of these guys is finding his center balance. And he's waiting and watching from his center, the slightest move off center of the other guy. And I'm, I'm supposed to do a big shout now, and I'm all afraid. Because I'm ready to knock this chair over as soon as I sit about it. What is it? I got me off balance. Off <laughs> I was really going good. I was going to sun. Okay. And what happens then? Bah! And this one guy goes flying out of the ring. Huh? I know, say it, but. <laughs> that guy, what has happened? One guy, one of those guys went off center. The other fellow sensed it. And it's over. It's over. It's over. They're measuring each other, finding the center. Finding the balance and realize, see, that's what I've got. That's what you've got to do in our lives. Because what happens? What happened to me? This like, I was totally off balance. Didn't know it. And got pushed down. Boom. Got pushed down. Couldn't stand. Because I was off balance. I wasn't in the center. What happens? When life comes against you, whatever it is, if it's disease, if it's problems, if it's your family, whatever it is, if you're off center, you're going to fall. You're going to cry. You're going to get on the phone. You're not going to know what to do. The tears are going to come to your eyes. And the reason is, <clears throat> you're not balanced. Get up and do that. Can everybody do that? Sure. No, it's all right. I don't want to sit. I don't want to sit. But you see what I'm saying to you? That's what's so critically important. When you, when you are knocked down by a problem, when I'm knocked down by a problem, the reason, what is it? I don't understand what's the. Who wins? Huh? Okay, when, that's uh, just, we'll have, but this is important for you to hear, okay, that's why I want you to hear this. When you fall in your life, whatever it is, it is because you are off balance. Somewhere you're off, it's just like those two sumo wrestlers. The guy that gets off balance is going to get knocked down. And it happens to all of us, but that's why we have to be... The one, always think of this in your life, the one who is caught off center is the one that'll fall. And many times you do. And in our lives we do. There was a, there's a great story of a uh, Japanese Zen master. 
I mean, this guy was totally centered. He did not move to the left. He did not move to the right. Totally centered. Within himself, he was centered. He was a Zen master. And he was in a Zen school and teaching others. Kept himself totally centered. And he was aware of what would come from any direction. And he said, in his training of these others who were studying Zen, he said, I will do this. I will bow on the floor to any pupil, no matter how small, how young, how inexperienced, who can catch me off center, as I am centered. Who could ever do such a thing? So one day he was, um, he got a little tired and he was in his office and he was meditating and very centered. And he called the little boy, you know, that went around waiting up people. He said, bring some water for his feet. He just wanted to relax and put his feet in water. Well, the kid did. He said, the water's a little cool. Make it a little bit warmer. So the kid went back, brought the water, put his foot in it. Ah! <laughs> and he got down. Bowed. <laughs> ah. Bowed to the littlest wench waif in the building because he was caught off center. See? So then the, the, the moral of that story is the sin of not being alert is the sin of missing the moment of life. Always being alert, always being centered. And so Tao, as we're studying tonight, then would be unremitting alertness. I, I know myself. In this experience, I am intending to be much more alert. I've developed mantras and chants. They're homemade chants. When I go by the refrigerator and I open and I see cookies and cream, I say, I will have none, I will have none, boom! It's a chant. I can say it in different languages. I will have none. I am determined. So I am much more alert to these things. I, how alert? See, when I went and had this experience, I mean, one thing that really touched me was the doctor himself. And this is because as we, as the work we're into, all of us together here, when you hear this from a doctor, it really touches you because I say, hey, I just went to another guy to get a little, uh, yeah. Check up for bronchitis, he finds this high blood pressure. And he looked at me and he said, that was a blessing. I said, blessing? He says, yes, because now I know about it. Nothing can go wrong. Well, OK. But, but see, now I'm alert. I was asleep. Don't you understand it? I was sound asleep. I understand it. Coming in here, telling you to do all of this stuff, see, telling you to get centered. Where the heck am I? Like on a seesaw. I'm up here to the other parts down here. I'm telling you to get centered. That's okay, because I'm just one of you. Up here, I guess, oh boy, I can do this pretty good. But down there, no difference. And I have to, and what's exciting for me, and sometimes why I start screaming and getting excited, is because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this for, for the first time. I'm learning these things. I get very excited with it. It's not something I've rehearsed. I said, whoa, this morning we did this. Do you know what, do you know what this do you know when this was written? Under a palm tree in Key West back in November. That's where this was written. I was just starting to run out of stuff, and Key West is beckoning again. I'm hearing, I'm hearing the strains of a tiny whiny, whiny bum bum means I must go. But that's where the, And so when I see these things, and I come back and say, wow, they get very, I'm very excited about them. But that's what. That's what I have to learn, and that's why we all become more alert to these things. So, and I'm not going to push this. I'm not going to get to be a health fanatic except for myself. I don't push anything on anybody, whether it be spirit, religion, or this. But I think that we, we have to all pay attention, physically and spiritually. And that's great. See? That's great. In, um, in, in Matthew 24, let's take a look at that for a minute, page 802. Matthew 24, we could, um, we can talk about this. 
See, I could talk about it in my situation that I just went through. You can talk about it in situations you've gone through. We can, we can think about it in the sumo wrestlers, the fellow who got caught off balance, or the Zen master who got caught off balance with his foot, you know. Matthew 24, page 802, verse 43. Jesus is talking, he says, if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Are you taking this out of the context of a house and putting it into here? See? If I had known the blood pressure was rising, I would have never poured the soy sauce. But I didn't, because I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't centered. I was just on one part of life. I was on the physical. And you know what's serious about that? When we talk about the physical and the, and the um, spiritual, remember something. We're all male and female, and you've got to balance the female and the male. And there the other aspect of it is the spirit. So my female part was going great, but my male part was not there. The physical. And so there, we neglect that, but we take care of this, we got a problem. We take care of the physical, we neglect that, we got a problem. So we have to have a balance. And that's where we become alert to this and we become to understand these things. Okay. So then the, the, the whole art of non-action in Tao is a little different. I think John said it before, I'm not sure. It's Wu Wai or Wu Wei. And that is non-action, see, unremitting alertness. I'm watching. It's like the lighthouse, watching, being alert to everything, physical and... See, so then there's no need in the way of the Orient to instruct or to direct because of itself life moves, of itself it speaks, it acts. Life acts and life plays itself out and you become one with it. And it really does. You know, I, I'm telling you, when, in, in the situation, I went, I went, let me tell you, what, I had a visitation by this spirit of Buddha speaking to me about Renge of cause and effect. You know when? When I was in here Friday night with a carpet sweeper sweeping the floor, preparing for Friday night. And, I, and, and, and a voice spoke to me, come on, yeah, 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 like a China, like a Chinese. And said, Billy, the ways of West of Bali, you want healing. Why? so you can make more mess of yourself. But I say, I taught you Renge. Renge and blood pressure is effect. And Billy, you are the cause. Now, what do you do? He said, this is what you do. Make new cause, so you make nice effect. You've been making bad cause, you make bad effect. Really? And then I just turned and there was Jesus standing there saying, Physician, heal yourself. Start making the right courses in your life. Be alert. Be sumo. Be centered. Watch. That's Tao. The way. See, when, when, I mean, do you ever see Japanese art? Do you ever go to a place where Japanese art or Chinese art? There's a beautiful, the trees and the little white birds. And, and you know, tell you something about it. You'll never see the artist's name. Never. Because that's opposite to the Western artist, to the artist of the Tao in China and the East. Nature is important. And to us, it's get my name on there because like this, you know, could be worth a lot of money. And this is the Oriental philosophy of Tao, which I love very much, and I can remember it in Key West. You know what it is? Nobody knows where I am. I remember our first one of our first days in Key West. We went into this little restaurant, and the doors are open and everything. It was raining. It was raining, Some, symbolically, cats and dogs. Joan went to the ladies' room, and I'm standing there, and there's this little mutt dog standing next to me. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he was all wet with his floppy ears hanging down. And I just looked out at the rain. 
And I was in such peace, because you know what I said to myself? Nobody knows where I am. Wow. I was free. Absolutely free. Nobody knew. Nobody in the world knew where I was at this little joint with the little dog in the rain. You know, a palm tree. It was great. So remaining then within the activity of those outside. And you do that. You were today, out today, I'm doing this, doing that. See? All the time. I mean, you've got folks here that sing, they entertain, and, and Tommy's a policeman, and salespeople, and nurses, all kinds. Of, you're doing all of these things. And they never know that just a few inches inside of this covering is nirvana. Just inside is a whole different one who is part of it, but not of it. As the Bible says, be in the world, but not of it. And this is the last thing I'll leave you with of this teaching, which I think is very beautiful. The life that is found on the mountaintop lives within the heart of all people. Again, the life that is found on the mountaintop. The life that is found on the mountain top, lives within the heart of all people. I want to put that there, circle, mountain top. Let's conclude this now, okay? Page 791, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Isn't it beautiful to bask in these types of things, the gentleness of these types of teachings, the wisdom of these things? Isn't it, isn't it, isn't it so beautiful to think of the artist who creates and says, this is the artist, not me. I'm simply showing you nature. I'm not going to solve this. Nature. Beautiful. The life that is found on the mountaintop is in the hearts of all people. Matthew 14, 23, about the precious Lord Jesus Christ. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Do you find it? Do you see it? What does it say? When he had sent the multitudes away, when you have sent the thoughts of the mind and the cares of the lower mind away, you rise up into the mountain of the higher self to meditate. And when the evening comes, when the darkness of the mind drains away, comes the light of the spirit, and there you are alone with God. And as the light of the Spirit begins to drain away and the darkness of our being comes upon us, set apart the thoughts. Lift yourself to the mountain within and be alone. Now. So you get a little idea, okay? 40-minute uh, course. You can buy books on this stuff and go, as John, I'm sure, could tell you, you can go into all kinds of deep understandings of these things. I own, I don't, I'm not here to do that. I'm just here to give you a little idea of what it is. So you say you've heard it. You know, so I was like, oh, I've never heard of that. Well, you have. I don't know. I don't really know what there is in, in, in the world of mysticism that you could say that you've never heard of, because here we've just mentioned most of it. And you can go and study the depths of it, but you've heard it. And they're beautiful things. So we did good. <clears throat> Thank you.